Welcome to the Anything Goes Podcast. I am your host, Combat All-Star, and today we're going to be delving into some comics. And man, I swear, I love this show because it is it is freedom. I can talk exactly how I want off the cuff, you know, to you guys. Don't have a big audience, so I feel like I can just do whatever I want. So thank you, I guess, for, for the few that watch and, you know, the billions that don't because I just think it's awesome. This is my favorite show. But anyway, um... Black Panther has actually sold a crap ton of comics since Civil War movie came out. So I guess people are really digging him. They really want to know more about the character. And I'm a big advocate of this. I really, it's funny, I remember talking about this a while ago. And I was saying, you know, those comic book movies. Okay, first of all, backtrack just a little bit here. Comic books, the sales of comic books have skyrocketed uh, for the first time in a long time since the 90s when they were just, you know top gun they were just the thing to read um and a lot of it is because of the movies the movies are are making people interested making people want to read the comics and uh, it's, it's doing wonders for the industry so i mean hats off to everybody who goes to the movie theaters and then ends up you know liking that stuff and going checking out the comics because i remember back in the day where people just you know you were called a nerd and you know you were a teaser you read comic books and it was it was it was a rough time and people didn't take comic books seriously they didn't understand that you can weave you know intricate stories and awesome adventures and everything and it was just just the same as reading a novel or, or playing a video game it was you know comic books are amazing they always have been amazing and I, and I think you know they always will be amazing so um, I just I'm, I'm just very very happy that I feel like comic books have gotten their due and, and they're in the limelight again not so happy about the that were being forced comic book movies every couple of seconds you know what i mean i feel like it's it's kind of overdone i'm getting getting a little, getting a little tired of it um i know I, i'll go i'll go out and support anything dc because i love them the big marvel movies i go and check out but the smaller ones i like x-men stuff i don't think i'll be i don't think i'll be checking those 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 things out but they are the flavor of the year. They are the fad right now, and I mean, it's it's paying off as far as comics. And I hope that people continue to buy uh, comics because those stories are unedited, uncensored. They're a billion times better than the movies, and you get to see what really happens. It's funny. I always refer to the comics as real life. Somebody's like, "Oh, I remember I was talking to somebody a while ago, and they were like, oh, Iron Man can be Batman.'" And I was like, "How do you figure?" And then he starts, you know laying down his explanation which is just goofy and stupid and then i start laying down my explanation and i start referencing comic books you know you know when he uh the dark knight when it first started back in the day when he you know when bane broke his back and he you know and just you know he went on the rampage and like just different aspects of uh batman and you know different um universes and everything of batman so i started laying it out he was like, when did that happen? I was like, oh, it happened in issue this and da 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 da. He was like, oh, I don't read the comic books. I'm like, really? You've only watched the movies and you have not read the comic books yet. We're having a conversation about comic book characters. I'm like, that didn't happen in real life, you know? It just, ah, it's just stupid. Yeah, I call comic books real life, like I said, but seriously, that's the source material. That is what's happening with those characters. Even now, there's all these, you know, all the heroes have, most of the heroes have ongoing comics, and that is canon that's what's happening right now today if comic books were real life that's that that and all the things that happened before it all the history you know that makes up that character so you just you can't look at the movies and 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 do a stupid argument like that oh that's, that was so dumb anyway um back to what i was what i was saying originally these movies are really helping you know the comic book sales and i have some of the figures here for uh black panther so so about six million, they made over um, over six million comics um, was sold. Uh, Black Panther comics uh, from March to April. So it's just just been crazy. And then uh, and another another uh, number here, the top selling comic from Marvel Comics was Black Panther two thousand six number one. So and that estimated um, two hundred and fifty three thousand two hundred and fifty eight units. Um, so, even for DC, so even for DC, um, uh, Dark Knight 3 Master Race that was on, uh, issue number 4 that came out in 2015, it ranked number 3 with, uh, 143, uh, thousand, 
54 units. So because of the Batman vs Superman movie, that one's killing it too. Um, and I mean, it's it's just it's it's pretty insane. It's pretty crazy. So even the uh, Wonder Woman, uh, because of the the, the comic, uh, because of the movie that came out, uh, moved 16,199 units. So I mean, I could sit here and read statistics all day long. And uh, but you know what it comes down to is Black Panther is the number one selling comic because of the movie. Uh, and Batman's moving comics, Wonder Woman's moving comics, like breaking records, you know, and setting new records for for the for this year and, and years prior, probably for the for the last ten years. So, I mean, they're they're getting their just due. They're selling comics, they're making money, and and it's amazing. I mean, I don't know. It just it's it's awesome. As someone who has always read comics and someone who was you know a little made fun of, I remember when I first got into comics back in the day. And uh, I was a little, a little made fun of until I got to college. And then when I got to college, I started meeting people from, you know, all walks of life. And I went to an art school. So it was very much embraced. And, you know, my, my good buddy Nate, you know, one of my roommates, introduced me to, to you know, the world of, of Marvel and, and DC. And really, really, really got me into it. I mean, before that, you know, I think I, think I read uh, some X-Men comics. Yeah, I had a, had a few X-Men comics here and there. I wasn't really a collector, but I enjoyed them. I think maybe before I got to college, I had a total of maybe 20 or 30 X-Men comics, including like the the very first Gambit and a few others. So I wasn't like a heavy, heavy collector. I just, you know, very casually collected. And even then, you know, casually collecting, got made fun of, call it a nerd. But when I got to college, I got really into it. Um, Nate introduced me to the comic book stores and, and we just, you know, went at it. It was awesome. Learned so much about Marvel and DC and Image and Dark Horse and Valiant and Titan and Archie and Aftershock. I mean, it was just, it was, it was an amazing time. You know, it was awesome. And I pick, I remember picking my first, um, I cannot remember for the life of me what it's called. I still have those comics. I got to go and find them. But it was a comic that was, um, man, what was it called? I, I'll have to put it in the, in the description. I'll put a link in the description if they're still around. But that's that's kind of my story. But I got these comics. I thought it was awesome, um, and it was it was like eternity something or other. Um, but I, I went and got them, and I read them. I enjoyed them, and I think it got up to like eight issues before it was actually canceled. When I picked them up, I got issue number one. It was a monthly comic, so about eight months. Going in there picking them up, and I remember around like issue seven. Uh, it went it went from being color to black and white. I was like, that's a little weird, you know. And I read the back of the comic, and it was like, oh, you know, we're, the funds are kind of low for the for the comics. We'll still be doing them. They'll just be black and white. I was like, I don't care. The story's awesome. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll read a black and white comic. So I continued to go get the comics, and um, a few months later, uh, I picked up my last comic, and there was a note in the back that said that this was the last issue. They weren't selling enough comics to actually, you know continue to make the comics so i ended up having you know I, that was my favorite comic and it ended so i had to choose something else but it sucked and, and that was i want to say i can't remember the year exactly but i want to say it was right before the x-men movie because i know that was a pretty big deal at the time there hadn't been any comic book movies and the industry the comic book industry wasn't so great i remember a lot of comic book shops closing down um, and they were just, you know, the ones that were open were struggling. And a lot of my comics that I really, really enjoyed didn't carry them because they, they weren't the popular comics. The only place that I remember going to that had everything that I wanted was Atomic Comics in Phoenix, Arizona. I, I went to school in uh, Philadelphia and then transferring to Arizona. And then, you know, I found that shop and it was like heaven. It had all the apparel, all the cards, you, could, you know, you know, uh, magic cards, Pokemon cards. They had tournaments in the back. It was like a super comic shop. It was the best comic shop today that I've ever been to in my life. So I hope they're still around. I'm not in Arizona anymore. I'm in Colorado. But I hope that Atomic Comics is still around. They're an amazing comic shop. And they had everything I could I could want. So I went there a lot, uh, picked up a lot of things, really got into image and, you know, it was just, it was just a, a fun and great time. Um, then after, after school and then moving and, you know, now I'm here in Colorado and, you know, they have some great comic book shops. They got like Mile High Comic is, is the big one around here. Uh, but 
there's still a lot of books that I enjoy that they don't carry. I remember when I first got here, looking for, you know, I wanted my Street Fighter. Where did my Street Fighter go? You know, I know originally it was with Image, and then it went to Udon, and then, you know, I think it's still with Udon. But I went there, I was like, where's my my where's my Street Fighter? Where's my Dog Stalker comics? And they just didn't carry them. They didn't carry back issues. They didn't carry any of them. So I was a little disappointed. Then I found Comicology, and Comicology has everything. So I ended up, you know, going to Comicology, and, and you know, that's how that's why I actually started collecting digitally because they have everything. It doesn't matter if they're not so popular or not. You know, if the publishers are, are and the artists are willing to, you know, depending if it's a independent, are willing to put their stuff on there, then they'll sell it. You know, I have a friend that uh, does uh, does a manga. It's called Orange Crow. Uh, James Perry. He's he's. I went to school with him. He's awesome. He worked for Tokyo Pop, and he was able to get on there. He self publishes, but he has his stuff on Comicology, and you know I feel like somebody like him, you know, wouldn't be able to. So I think anybody who self publishes actually, it'd be, they'd have a hard time. It'd be hard pressed to get into every comic book store. So I mean, stuff like Comicology is great because I can find everything I want to, and I don't have to hop around to different stores, and and then, you know, I don't have to worry about carrying a, a big old shoebox full of comics either, like <laughs> like a nerd, which I am, but not to put nerd, nerdism on public display, I can go ahead and, you know, download them onto my iPad, watch it, or uh, read them, and, and then enjoy myself, so I'm collecting Wonder Woman, Flash, and Martian Manhunter, you guys know I'm a big Big, 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 big Marshall Manhunter fan. Big Flash fan. Love Flash. Those are my two favorite superheroes of all time. And, uh, you know, I, I do like Captain America. He's probably like my third on the rung and my favorite in, uh, in Marvel. But love Comicology. I love to be able to collect my, my monthlies and, and, you know, get some insight. And it helps with my imagination and everything and help me be creative. So I love it. I love everything that comics have to offer. And I am so glad and happy that the industry is thriving and surviving today i mean i'm i'm it's it puts a big smile on my face because as someone who lost their favorite comic because you know there wasn't enough people buying the comic because they weren't able to get it into that many people's hands it's sad and and i wish that that comic uh, was around today i think it was um I, can't, I still can't remember the name eternity of something or, or whatever but I wish that they were around today because I feel like if they were around today, they would be surviving. As popular as comic books are, as popular as the movies have become, and people are watching the movies and they're going to Comicology and or their comic their local comic book shop and they're they're reading comics and they're reading those comics and then maybe they're they're browsing and they find something else that's interesting that could be you know the new Space Ghost comic or the new Red Sonia comic and they're like you know what let me pick this up too because this looks awesome. And I'm, it just, it's it's awesome. It's amazing. I love those guys. I love all the artists and the writers. They, comic books have the best, you can quote me on this, the best artists and the best storytellers, more importantly, the best storytellers ever. I don't know what's going on with Hollywood where they just want to play it safe and, and just write whatever the heck they want to write because, or, or rehash, I should say, things that are successful because they're so afraid to take risks. And comic books are the only medium that I can think of right now that is not afraid to take risks. They're the only, only medium that I can think of where they can go out there and they can express whatever they want, however they want. Aside from YouTube. YouTube's the same way. But, I mean, as far as storytelling and writing, I really, really feel like comic books are the pinnacle. You know, I've read some stories that I've, you know, the best stories in my life, you know, that I've ever heard of uh, from a comic book. I mean, there was one about uh, this this uh, this guy who had the X gene and was, you know, um, he had some sort of cancer that was associated with it. And it was it was really heartbreaking, but it was an awesome story. So one of the best stories I've ever read, even Civil War, they do these major story arcs in comics that bring everybody together. Civil War was one of them. It was excellent. And the movie pales in comparison to the Civil War comic. Same thing with uh, DC's uh, Blackest Night. Blackest Night was amazing. They did an awesome job. I mean, it, it involved everybody in the DC universe. And it was just, it was a good time. It was a great story. And these writers are just awesome. And I know um, with with movies, you, you can't get those writers because they don't want to take, you know, the studios don't want to take a chance. With TV, they're a little bit more lenient. I know with uh, DC, 
a lot of uh, a few of the big writers like you know Jeff Johns are are responsible for kicking a lot of the DC uh, TV shows off and look how phenomenal they're doing. But then you know they have those same people that do a phenomenal job in the comics and then later on in the um, in the TV shows they're not putting them they're not making them they're not they're not having them write the movies and I don't get that. And it's funny because I know I I read a couple weeks ago that DC is actually having. Jeff Johns head up a lot of the comic book movies because he's doing so well with the TV shows and of course he's you know an awesome writer and he's helped kickstart a lot of comics you know um, uh, shoot man uh, Aquaman and and uh, I think Wonder Woman the Flash I mean he's helped kick off a lot a lot of DC comics and made them super duper successful even you know he wrote the Blackest Night so you know that that will tell you a lot but I mean yeah I never understood why they did that why they wouldn't have the same people that that write these amazing stories go and write some amazing movies but now it seems like dc may be taking a cue from that i know marvel's been super successful so maybe they don't need those same writers they do a great job i can't knock on them even though i'm a dc guy i can't knock marvel for their movies they're great but the tv shows pretty much suck uh agent carter was probably the only exception i can think of agent to see agents of shield was pretty awful in my opinion and um, a lot of other shows, Marvel shows, uh, they suck. I mean, aside from the, the Netflix stuff, um, I feel like they're really finding their niche there. But again, that's Marvel Knights. That's an imprint of Marvel, and those characters are darker. So maybe for TV, darker works, and then for movie, lighter works. I don't know. But anyway, um, bottom line, really, really happy that the comic book industry is thriving. It is amazing the numbers that Black Panther is doing because of Civil War, and it's amazing the numbers that Batman and Wonder Woman are doing because of Batman vs. Superman. I just love it. I love it as a geek, as somebody who's really, really into comics, as an avid of, of good stories and good storytelling. I think it's amazing. So, um, hats off. To, <laughs> hats off to, to, to all those guys that are, that are busting their butt and making great movies. Hats off to uh, the comic book writers that are finally getting their just due, I feel like, since the early 90s. And hats off to all those people that are going out there and taking a chance on comic books because that is the medium. I don't, I mean, I, I don't even think it's my opinion anymore. Of course, sure, it's my opinion, but I, you know, I think it's pretty much fact. It is the medium. It's the medium where writers can go and explore. It's the medium where writers can take chances and tell stories that they love and they hope that people uh, will also love. And you know what? I'm going to recommend a movie for you guys. There's a movie called The Secret Origins of DC Comics, and it is amazing. Um, it basically tells the origin of comic books, period, and the origin of DC Comics. And it, they kind of go hand in hand because DC, comic was, DC Comics was actually f the first comic book publisher to uh in america they were the first pop they were the first comic book publisher period and they were the first uh because before then they were just like strips and newspapers but they actually did the first comic book and they uh you know did the first superhero they created that whole genre uh through superman so it's a really good movie it's really really cheap you can find it on amazon for a couple bucks so i I'd go pick it up it's called the secret origins of dc comics so uh, like I said, go pick that up. I love everything that's been happening. What do you think about comic books, guys? Do you love them? Do you hate them? What's your favorite comic book? Uh, what's your uh, your ongoing? What's your monthlies? Do you like manga? Do you like the American stuff? Let me know because I would love to hear from you guys about this because this is something I'm really passionate about. I love comics. So, again, let me know. Comment in the section below. I know a lot of you uh, don't comment in the sections. You love hitting me up on Twitter instead, and that's totally fine, too. So comment in the sections below. Start a conversation. I would love for that to happen. Or hit me up on Twitter like you guys usually do. Like, subscribe, share. And until next time, guys, so long.